Hey everyone, welcome back to the Consecrated Life Project, where we talk about embracing your mission, living your purpose with faith and confidence, and really learning to let God lead your life. I have an awesome guest for you today. His name is Jerem Rush. I met him, it's probably been almost a decade now ago, um, serving at a different company, and it's just been so amazing watching him learn and grow and speak up more and different things and it's just resonated with my soul every time I hear him singing or videos or whatever and I'm like hey he needs to do this and it was literally like last week God was like now I'm like okay and I messaged him and he was like yes I'm in so let me introduce you to Jerem the Unconquerable by the way I love that that's on your name <laughs> so thank you for being with us this is Jerem Rush will you tell us the story real quick behind Jerem the Unconquerable uh, yeah, well, I mean, I figured if labels are going to get tossed around, I was going to pick mine. And one of the things that defines my life is that nothing can conquer me when I have God with me. And so it helps me to focus. When I see that unconquerable, I realize that by myself, that's horribly inaccurate. But uh, if I trust him, it's absolutely perfect for who I am. Oh, I love that. I'm glad I asked. And that's a great place to start off here. <laughs> Okay, so give us a little quick two-minute intro to you. Where are you from? What does your life look like in this season? And what are you passionate about? Oh, man, two-minute intro. Um, let's see. So I'm 41. I am recently divorced, which has really played uh, a lot into who I am at this current moment. I have four children, and they're all amazing in spite of the parenting that I gave them. They seem to be turning out pretty well, so that's good. Um, I have done so many things with my life. It seems like every time I talk to someone and I mention something new and they're like, what did you not do? So I have like this huge gamut of very random experience, right? And uh, I guess my life has been defined by fun. Fun is something that is hugely important to me. If I'm not having fun, I shouldn't be doing it. Um, my my definition of fun though is is quite broad. Um, I have a lot of fun at church. I have a lot of fun worshiping in the temple. Like to me, like it fills my soul and brings me joy. And I consider that to be fun. And so um, I'm a sword fighter. I run a sword fighting group in Orem. So we do that once a week. And so again, lots of fun. I get to connect with the community. I'm a high level extrovert. Um, love talking to people anywhere I go. It's like my wife jokes that like I'll go fly on a plane somewhere and I'll come back and I'm like hey I was in a wedding you know <laughs> like did you know them well I do now you know like I mean it's just who I am I love people so much and uh, and I just really enjoy connecting yeah so how's that was that too no that's awesome <laughs> whatever it is is just perfect um, those who have been here before know that we go by the spirit so whatever comes out is just whatever we feel prompted to say it's totally not planned like he has no idea what questions I'm about to ask him. That and is true. I'm just going to go with it and see where it leads and hear some more about his story and his walk with Jesus and really how he gets to that place of really, really trusting. Okay, so we're going to start with how, what's the story of how you came to find your mission and your purpose? Like, I know that that's different <laughs> and our missions, our purposes change from time to time. You know, when I was younger my purpose was changing diapers and rocking babies all day you know and that kind of shifts as you go through as God calls you to different things so how did you come to find your mission and purpose and what do you see that being at this stage okay so I'm actually going to answer a different question okay <clears throat> but it's a good one it's um it's the day that I realized I didn't have a purpose um okay. yeah definitely a very strong moment in my life that helped me though to get where I am I was I was much younger. I was like 19. And, you know, I remember all of my like when I was growing up, I felt like I did have a purpose. There was something out there. I didn't know what it was. God had a work for me to do and only I could do it. And because I wasn't thinking about it correctly, I, I just I just felt invincible. I'm like, well, I can't really die. Like I really knew that I couldn't die. Like I couldn't be taken off the earth because this thing had to be done. It had to be done by me. And then one day I woke up and that was gone because I was not living correctly, you know, I was not following God. Um, and I just remember, like, just God and I have a very interesting relationship, like I, I will see in my mind, you know, I could don't hear voices, um, but I, I do see things in my mind. And I just remember, I saw myself walking up to him, knowing that I had not fulfilled my purpose. And I remember him saying, well, you're back, you know, and it was like, there could have been so much more. And there wasn't. 
and that scared me. That was like, oh my gosh, like I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. And that's the moment that I decided, like, um, I quit doing drugs. I quit sleeping around. I quit using profanity. I quit watching, you know, R-rated movies. Like everything, all like it all happened at one specific moment in time, um, and. And yeah, that's, that's where that happened. And that's, I called my grandparents. I lived in South Carolina, they were in Utah. And I said, here's all the trouble I'm in. Can I move in with you now? And uh, they prayed about it and told me to come on out. And, and it was, it was on that trip where I catalyzed that decision. Um, I'll share one more little piece. I was driving through Colorado and I was, I just knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do it, but my brother had served his mission in Colorado. We had driven through together once before, and I remembered where the old missionary apartment was. And so I drove there, found the picture of Christ in the window, and just went and knocked on the door. And these missionaries open the door, and I tell them what I'm doing, and I tell them I need a blessing. And they're like, you were obviously sent here right now. Um, we just came home because we forgot something. We've been here 30 seconds. We're leaving in another 30 seconds. We're never home in a day. Like, And so I got the blessing. And it was, it was phenomenal. Like the words that were spoken. And I just remember walking out going, I got this, you know, like God supports me. And yeah. And that was, that was where it all changed. It was just between those two experiences right there. And they were within a week of each other. Like I, I fled Babylon pretty quickly when, when I knew what I was supposed to do. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We talked for like 20 minutes before we started this guys and I kept being like oh my gosh my heart thank you I'm so glad yeah. I had that realization and you came so maybe this is the answer to the next question but what was okay. the point when you became 100% committed to following your path whatever that looks like say okay I'll go where so you want that, me to go whatever you yeah have, I'll do it. That, that's okay so what I just shared was not the answer to that question um so far and we, we always go in levels right you know if you'd have asked me two years ago, that would have been my answer. But now, um, what really pushed me was the divorce that I just went through. It was really, I mean, well, I don't want to, I don't want to misrepresent anything here. When I tell people about my divorce and they tell me about theirs, mine's the best story. Like as far as like we're getting along, it was, you know, like we really tried to work together. We kept the kids at the top of our priority list and we, and we get along really well. We haven't had a single fight since, um, since it was brought up that, Hey, let's, let's get divorced, you know, um, which is kind of phenomenal, you know? <laughs> like, but it was through that process. I just remember every time I turned around, um, like we were separated for a year and a half and, and the Lord kept showing me things like things that would lead me right to Abraham and Isaac and those kind of stories in the scriptures. And I just remember thinking, yeah, I can put this on the altar. And at the last moment, he's going to snatch it up, you know, and, and uh, that's not what happened. Um, <laughs> we, we ended up getting divorced. And but it was through that process of just learning to trust him and trust him again and again. And at first I thought we were going to work things out and we we're going to stay together. And then as we got further along, God was telling me, he's like, hey, whatever happens, you have to trust me. And so I, I kind of eased into that of, hey, even if he doesn't save it, I still love him. I trust him, you know, and this is OK. But I still thought he would, you know, and just I mean, and it was just over and over again. And he told me some very specific things to do. And I'm actually going to share those three things. Um, I don't share all three very often, but he told me one get back in the temple. Cause I was, I was trying, I was staying away from the temple. I just, I had let myself slide. And he says, and you go every week. That's what you do from now on. And that's the end of it. Like you go once a week, you go at least. And, uh, and so I started doing that. And the, the difference between going once a month and going once a week is absolutely startlingly night and day, completely different. It will change your life. I just, just try it, please. You know, like maybe for three months, I don't know, just see what it does to your life. It's amazing. Um, the other thing he told me was no more PG 13 movies. Like there's so much stuff in there that's taking up real estate up here that you, you need that space. Like, if you want to hear me, you need that space. Now, this is not something I'm telling everybody to do because that was my answer. Um, that was totally my answer. I hope you try going to the temple once a week because I know it'll change you. I have no idea. Like this, like I said, PG-13 movies, that's just what I needed. You're still a wonderful person if you watch them. I don't care. Um, 
but that's what I needed. And so I stopped and it was amazing how much more clarity returned to my mind, like phenomenal difference. Um, again, just my answer, maybe try it. If you feel like it, you might be surprised. Um, and then the last thing he said was, whatever your wife wants, you facilitate that with love. 100%. He didn't tell me to get divorced. He didn't tell me not to get divorced. And as a matter of fact, there were different points in that process where I said, okay, it's going really slow. We've been separated for a year. Nothing's happening. I would like to move on. I've decided to get divorced. And he would come down really like, not like abrasively, but very clearly. I told you what to do. And I'm okay, all right, <laughs> I'll do that. And then at some point, I'm again, I'm like, well, maybe I'll try to convince her that, you know, because obviously God's pushing me this other And he's like, I already told you, <laughs> like, you know, everything you need to know. And through that entire process, um, the only direction I got with the divorce was just that one directive, facilitate with love. That's it. He never told me anything else the whole time, but that was everything I needed to know. And, and like I said, now uh, we have a phenomenal relationship. We work together really well. Even when we have conflict that in the past would have been a real struggle, we come together and we're like, oh, cogs aren't aligning. How are we going to figure this? And we figure it out and it works and it's always been okay. So that's, that's the answer to that question. I love it. And I love that facilitate with love because that goes forever for always actually in every yep. interaction yep. with anyone like yeah and when I ask that's still the answer so <laughs> yeah. awesome okay so the old, you'll probably have another story on this one it might kind of fit into the last one as well <laughs> um but you have a moment where you feel like I know where I'm going I'm headed here and then God's like actually you're gonna go this way instead oh my gosh yeah um <laughs> <laughs> just five or ten or twenty of them right <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's, uh, you're asking great questions. I love your questions. So thank you. Um, yeah, I, uh, let, let me, let me share this, this story. This is different than what I was just thinking, but this is uh, one that, again, like a life changing moment. And this is one you have to hear. If you start listening to the story, you have to hear to the end. Like you can't just drop out and be like, oh, this guy's crazy. No, you have to hear the rest. Um, don't, don't stop in the middle. Do you hear that? If you're listening on audio or on video, stop like, in the middle. pause right now if you have to pause or listen till the end of the story. Correct. <laughs> correct. Yeah. Because it could be easy to take this the wrong way if you don't hear the last of it. So um, I was praying one night and I was saying, I, I just need the next step. Like, what is the next thing that's going to help me grow? I want to, you know, I realize wherever I'm at right now, there's more. I want more, you know, I want more. I want to be a better person. <clears throat> and so, um, the spirit was very clear. Be open. I've got something to teach you next. Be open. And I said, I can be open. I'm a very open person. This is easy. I got this, you know, no problem. And uh, cause I was, I was not aware of what was coming. Um, and so it was the next day I was at a business meeting with my business partner. He and I uh, was great friend, um, <clears throat> but we would meet every Monday. We talk about business for 15 minutes and then we'd always jump into philosophical and spiritual and we just had an amazing um amazing relationship that way and um but i remember like he he was no longer a member of the church um still a wonderful wonderful dude that i highly respect and trust but i remember the spirit spoke and was like here it is this is the piece and i'm like i'm open you know and as soon as i agreed and i was like yes let's go the words that came out of his mouth were, Jesus Christ is not my savior. And I said, wait, <laughs> that's not, that's not the piece. <laughs> I changed my mind. I'm not open anymore. <laughs> like, take that one away, please. Um, but it was, it was, you know, I was there and I was experiencing this. And, and in my mind, I was like, no, <laughs> like, no, I'm not looking at that. And, and this part was stern, you know, the voice of the spirit came and said, you said you would be open. It's like, like, okay, you know, like, okay, I'll look at it. And, um, and I mean, it was, I mean, from that moment, like foundations were shaken and 
I had no idea. Like all of a sudden my entire life, like really in one moment, my entire life meant nothing. And I was like, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know if there's a purpose to anything. And I just felt so absolutely lost and hopeless and alone. Um, and I think that part was really good that I experienced that. Like the moment I truly doubted, the moment I truly said, maybe he's not, those were the feelings that came in lost and hopeless and alone. And that is not fun. Um, that is not fun. You go from an eternal perspective to no perspective. And so the, the ensuing process of what I went through to determine, because now I needed to know, you know, I've got this, just this, this dark and this light contrast. And there's this line where they just meet and I have to know which side I'm on. And, uh, it only took like two weeks. So very, very quickly in terms of our mortal life and eternity, especially, but it took two weeks of pretty constant reflection and study and prayer and just desperation to know. And I gained a testimony of my savior. I thought I had one before, but now, wow, just the absolute stark difference was Oh man, it's like I could breathe again after, you know, having someone just crushing my chest for my entire life. I had no idea what the difference was, you know, like that that could be true, like that 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 difference could be there. And so my my fervent hope now in this moment is that I experience that again. And so the Lord has just shown me over and over and over again, no matter what it is, be open. Because if if I can be open to the idea that maybe Christ is not my savior, there's nothing greater than that. Like anything else that I might say, well, what if this is true? Or what if this is not true? Like, and, and so for me, that openness has been able to build my testimony again and again and again. And it's brought a couple of things to my attention that I'm like, oh, I was wrong. Like, and I want to know that, you know? And so it's, yeah. I don't remember what your question was, but that was the story that went with it. So <laughs> A time when God directed you to change course when you thought you yeah, were going to yeah. change. Yeah. And so so that openness has caused me to change course multiple times. And I could share a bunch of other stories, but we we don't have all one. that much time. Just so pick what's one. that? Just pick, pick one. one? Yeah. Okay. Um <clears throat> now this is one again that people are gonna have to take with a grain of salt because I don't have the ending to this one yet. Okay. So I'm divorced and so I've been dating and this has been really fun and I've really enjoyed it. And I found a lady that I started dating. She seems super cool. But then I find out like she hasn't been in the temple in five years and she's, you know, she gets her kids to church when she has them, but she doesn't go on her own. She does other things that are spiritual. And it was this really weird juxtaposition because she really has a deep understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but she doesn't look the same way at the church that I do or the temple. And to me, it's non-negotiable that I get married in the temple. Like that's just how I am. And and I'm one of the people like within the church, like I can see some issues with the church that I feel like I perceive, but I also am 100% dedicated to staying within the church. I feel like Christ has, has created that for a reason. And even if there are issues, he's the one that chose Judas, right? And so maybe there's, maybe there's people up top that aren't serving our best interests, but he put them there. Why would we have the testimony of Judas within the 12 apostles that Christ set up himself if we if if the church was supposed to be totally perfect and there's never going to be anybody that's going to lead us astray like I just I don't know like maybe people disagree with me and that's totally fine call me we'll talk about it um but I just feel like it's okay that our leaders are fallible you know and who knows maybe there's a Gadianton up there I actually don't care because Christ is still at the helm he can handle that like it's, it's bigger than me, but it's not bigger than him. So I'm, I'm just not worried whatever happens. And I could be totally wrong. Maybe I'm completely off base, but that's fine too. I'm open whichever way. I don't care. Um, so the, the whole point though, is that now I'm being led down this path and I can see where this lady has actually um, helped me to learn and grow in ways that I never would have experienced had I been really like that close to a church member. And we've since, we've since gone separate ways but I'm, I'm more than half expecting God to bring us back together. Like the, the amazing coincidences, you know, synchronicities and things that happened where she is concerned, like that's to me, I, 
the spirit has spoken to me that way my entire life and is still speaking to me and just pointing me her direction again. And I'm like, I don't know where this is going to end up. I have no idea. It's definitely not what I would have chosen for myself. And, and I keep being pointed that direction. So again, I don't know the end of the story, not a clue, um, but I'm open whichever way and have no idea really what's going on, <laughs> but, but I know God's hand is in it. I know that part. So and that's yeah, okay to be weird. on recording for everyone. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, we definitely go by the spirit. Um, I love that, and I totally hold to that fact that you know every single person on earth is on their own sanctification journey, whether that yeah. be the prophet or the neighbor next door, or the person who has no idea who Jesus is. Like we're all on that journey, and that He cares and He loves for each of us, and He's going to take us where we need to go when we need to be there if we listen. And I love yeah. the focus on personal revelation that when we have that then we're fine because if your connection is direct then you're going to be guided in what you need even if it doesn't make sense absolutely 100 percent. okay one more question for you hey share a okay. time that might have looked like you failed in air quotes for those who might be listening <laughs> in the eyes of the world because you might look like from the outside in the world's perspective, oh, that was a failure, but you learned something. And what benefit did you come from that? Oh my gosh. So I don't believe in failure. Um, <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> um, the, the simple fact is that's what the atonement does. It takes something that we look at as a negative and changes it to a positive. Like another way to say that is when you feel like you're going through a trial, all that is, is the package around the blessing. That's all. There's like, I don't know. And so I think I'm, I'm one of the few people and I really, I really do recommend people do this. You'll, you'll hear people say, don't do it all over the place. I think they're wrong. Um, I'm open. Maybe I'm wrong. I <laughs> like, pray for the trial, pray for the trial. God will never give you more than you can handle. He won't, he won't do it provided you bring him in to the process because the simple fact is basically everything we experience on earth is more than we can handle but when we call on him all of a sudden there's there's nothing that's outside of our reach and so so yeah i i do recommend that that you get a you know get serious with the lord and say hey whatever it is i need to go through to bring me back let's do that you know and and while we're at it can you you know, help me through the process, refine me. So I, I want to come out the other end closer to you, right? You know, and so, but like I said, he, he won't ever give you more than you can handle. And I, uh, so I'll share this. I know I'm not, I'm not going to name names on this one, but I know three guys, I'll name one name because one's me. But I know three guys very close to me. One of them prayed, said that prayer, right? Help me out. I know I need to get closer. I know I need more. I'm not doing it. Um, and it's like you and I talked earlier that, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing that the Lord will humble you if you're not going to humble yourself. Sometimes you have to say, humble me for me. You know, like I want to be humble, but I'm, I'm clearly not doing it. But if you'll do it for me, I'm, I'm ready, you know. And so and he will. He's, he's amazing that way. It's, it's a true. It's a great blessing. And so anyway, so the first guy said this prayer. I need to get closer. Whatever it is I need to go through, put me through it. He got cancer immediately, found out he had cancer and it's been with him and we don't know how long he's, he's going to last. Um, but he is absolutely a different person in much better ways and he doesn't regret it. Second guy, same prayer, right? He immediately gets into a car. And I say immediately, I mean like within days, right? Gets into a car accident. Um, it was a single car accident, gets a brain injury and, uh, it, it is, is doing quite well. But again, totally changed his spiritual outlook. And this is a guy that I've looked up to spiritually for a long time, way better now, you know, just phenomenally better. And, and he's still got his issues. We've all got our issues. You know, both these guys still have issues, but they're still completely different, amazing, amazing, amazing individuals because of these experiences. And the third one, obviously, is me. I said this prayer and within the week, my wife said, hey, let's get divorced. And I was like, really? <laughs> but um nothing has changed me more in my life yet the process of that divorce 
and what it took. I remember reading a scripture in Job, Job 13, 15, though he slay me yet, will I trust in him? I found that scripture right at the beginning and it just became my mantra of, of what I wanted my life to be like, no matter what God lets me go through, I trust him. That's the end. Like there's nothing beyond that. And the moment it's, it's crazy. In the moment I suddenly go, what am I going to do? How am I going to fix this? And I, kind of relegate his trust a little further down always fear always worry all you know and and there's so many times we don't know what we're going to do in life so many times and i can't believe i used to live like this all the time and now i just breathe and i go he's got this i'm just going to decide what i'm going to do take my decision to him see if he approves that or not and if he says nothing i go i just go you know um i like to get approval but but sometimes he says hey over there, you know, go, go do that other thing. And it's, it's been amazing. So absolute trust all the time, specifically when you have no idea what to do, you just make a decision. You tell them you're going and I just trust him to stop me. Um, and it's amazing how far I get, you know, <laughs> just doing something that it was totally my choice and it works out sometimes. And other times he does stop me. A beautiful thing i decided years ago that i choose to learn through joyful experiences so nice. i just said okay this is my sanctification journey and i'm in and i'm all in and i want you to like put all the attributes of christ into me and sanctify and i've had those similar experiences but i choose to not pray for the challenge i just pray for the uh -huh. sanctification and say it gets to be a joyful experience so then when the hard thing happens i think okay how does this get to be joyful and how to find the joy within it so Hopefully mine won't come out quite as intense as your friends there did. But oh, goodness. <laughs> it definitely like helps me learn, but I feel like it's in a way that's not, it's kind of like we were talking earlier about like being compelled, you know, humble yourself or be compelled. And I feel like it's okay. I'm choosing into those hard things ahead and then they don't seem as hard as they would, you know, had they just shown up for me. And that's a critical piece. Like when you trust God, like even when it's super, super hard, it can still be joyful. And if the light coming out of your face right now is any indication, you experience joy, which is really, really nice. So I have a suggestion. Maybe we can we can yeah. both try the other side. Yeah. I can say, hey, this is what I want. And can we also let's let this be joyful. And maybe you, if you're willing, <laughs> just say whatever I need. Just send it to me. I'll experience it. So, yeah. No, just an idea I no I do. I do say whatever i need um okay, i just perfect I, I think at one point you said the word like challenge or pray for the struggle or something i was like no no we don't want struggle but <laughs> I, I, pray for the, I pray for the trial, trial but it's the trial right. that will sanctify me which maybe i was not clear on but that's why i want the trial i'm not i don't want to be tested to see what my strength is because i don't have any you know um, I already know what's going to happen there. <laughs> I will fall apart. Um, but yeah, it's, it's whatever is going to bring me closer to him. That's what I want. So here's a thought. This is totally off the cuff, not normally in this interview, but you are a very deep thinker about this type of thing and you're open. So let's see what you think about this one. I hey, hear lots of times in the church, it says like, oh, life is a test. If I've searched, I did a search in the scriptures for a test and it only shows up in this, the subject headings. It's actually yeah. not in the scripture. And whenever it's in the scripture, it talks about prove me. So it's that we're proving God, like, hey, like, I'm going to see the character of you that you really are going to show up for me. It's not a test on us. It's a test of will you trust me enough to see that I am who I say I am? Yeah, that's I mean, that's nearly verbatim what I would have said. Like, he knows what we're going to do. He knows us. He doesn't need to test us like we might need to know what we're going to do. But the, the only valuable information that comes out of that is, do we really trust? Like when the scriptures say X, when the scriptures say over and over again that we will be given according to our desires, why do so many of us feel terrible when we want something? We, if we don't need it, why, you know, and then we, oh, we just have to go without. Are you kidding me? Like we're here because like, like God wants to give us what we want. Now the real magic happens. This is the crazy piece. God wants to give us what we want, but the magic happens is when we turn our desires to want what he wants. And that's magic. And when you really want that, you're getting your desire. 
and and when you want what he wants he has everything and he'll give it to you and he'll give it to you like i i don't know like i'm i'm with you 100 percent. like the the real challenge here is do we feel close enough to him and do we feel enough like him that we will test him not in a way to say how far can i push him but to say he said this i want him to fulfill it you know and you just go for it. And if there's things you need to understand to cause that fulfillment to happen, he'll help you understand it, you know? But it's, I've gone to him many times. Hey, this is your promise. You said it, you know, like, how do I get this? Like, <laughs> and, and he just leads you through the process. Such yes, a beautiful journey. Such a beautiful journey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm gonna put this back, both back on here for a second. Okay, so there's probably people who are wondering, asking, maybe some King of Random fans who are seeing your shirt and being like, <laughs> Hmm, he looks a little familiar to me. So if you can give us a little bit of backstory, what's the story behind your shirt and what is this you're working on now? Because oh. whether it be the parents who are listening to this or their children who are binge watching and they're like, hmm, you know, give us some insight. Sure, sure. How, okay, how much time story? do we have? Do I, I share the whole story of how I became the king of random? Do I just talk about who the king of random is and what we do? I'm okay with our interview going a little longer than was planned. So if your time schedule allows for it, you feel free to go. We're a little flexible because we go by the spirit. So they never okay. are exactly the same. End point. <laughs> That's why we pre-record. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I will start by talking about what is the King of Random um, and then what we do. So King of Random is a YouTube channel. It's uh, it's kind of a large channel. I just recently came in as host. I've been hosting for a couple of months and um, it's it's like one of the top 1500 channels in the world as far as how many subscribers we have we have 12 million subscribers and uh and that's i didn't build that somebody else built that i just god put me in this position and we'll talk about that in a second but we just do fun experiments uh fun things yesterday we did a video it's one i haven't released yet but it's i was launching ping pong balls just how far can they go what can we shoot through we had a lot of fun we filled some water and froze them when we shot those through stuff and and uh, we just had a lot of fun with just a fun, cool experiment. And a lot of these you can do at home. Um, there's a certain element of danger, you know, and so just be smart about it. But it's it's the kind of fun things that people want to do. But if someone will show you how to do it safely, you're in a much better situation. But we just have fun. We want to create content so that, you know, families can get together and do these projects together and just enjoy it. So that's what we do. Um, I can talk a little bit about how I became the King of Random. Um, my friend Grant Thompson was the original King of Random, started the YouTube channel. He and his wife, Janae, worked it and, uh, and they were doing amazing. Grant and I were friends and we did some experiments in my shop together. We never made any videos of any of those, um, but we did stuff and it was lots of fun. And, and then I felt really deeply that I needed to work with him, right? You know. And I didn't know how, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I really felt that a lot. And so we kept in contact and we talked about different stuff. And, and then one day he was in an accident and he died. And it was, uh, it was really sad. I remember this hole like opened up inside. I remember feeling like I still feel like I'm supposed to work with him, but now he's gone. And I didn't know if I had missed the opportunity. It was really weird because it still felt the same. Um, this this you know this almost a calling like I something I'm supposed to do with this guy and and uh and years passed you know and over the years I never really accepted I don't know like I feel still felt this hole I never really looked up uh, the details on how he died it just felt too close to me and um I never wanted to know and and then just a few months ago I had a buddy call me and say hey I want to start a YouTube channel I'm like, oh, I know a guy. I'll take you up to this guy and that, that helps people start these channels. And and so I set up the meeting. We all show up together. I've got nothing to do with it. I'm just introducing people, right? And uh, so I introduced these guys. And by the end of the meeting, the YouTube professional points at me and he's like, we need to meet after this. Like, weird, you know, but sure. You know, and so so I, I meet with him and he's like, you need to be the next host on the King of Random. Cause he had some stake in the company. I didn't realize this anyway. And so, um, 
I'm like, what? Like, you've known me for an hour. <laughs> like, this is like, like, I knew your name and we, you know, like this is all I knew about you really. And so we meet and he, and then you pop this on me. That's wild. What? And so I'm like, well, we have to talk to Janae. Right. And uh, I'm really trying to stall. I'm like, we can't move forward with this. this is crazy. He's like, she'll be here in 10 minutes. We have an appointment already. I'm like, Whoa, this is nuts. So she comes in, he pitches the idea. And within five minutes, she's like, yes, absolutely. Let's go. And so I am the new king of random out of nowhere. Like I wake up in the morning and I didn't know there was an opportunity and I show up in this guy's office and two hours later, I'm the new guy. I'm like, this is wild. Like, so that's, that's my journey. And there's, there's a lot more detail on how that happened. And there's, there's different things. Like I can now go back years, like eight years prior to that and see specific things that happened. Like I met Janae and then my ex-wife met Janae and it's like some things happened and we helped grow the business. Like, like yeah off to the side somehow and it was crazy there's so many things that happened and it all culminated and now here i'm wearing this awesome t-shirt and i am the king of random like and i feel that hole that was inside is now full and now it's overflowing and i get to build on the legacy of a guy that i just thought was absolutely phenomenal that guy lived more in a day than most people can fit into a month like he blew my mind and i'm still not at his level um but I get to be in that energy and live that, which is amazing. Like, so cool. <laughs> That's really cool. And I know you mentioned before that you felt like you were supposed to work with him. If you've mentioned that before, but I feel like in this time you do, you are getting to work with him. Cause I'm yeah. so excited. He's like, get your idea. Here's this experience. <laughs> right. So do that thing. And yeah. being like on an eternal scale. Yeah. Which I think is so cool. I, I have really felt him near and Janae has felt the same thing when we've worked together. Sometimes she'll just cry and she's like, it's like Grant's here, you know, and it's, it's been really cool. It's been a really, really cool experience. And I'm grateful that the Lord trusts me enough to let me do this. Like it really is a calling, you know, it's tons of fun. I build weapons. I blow things up. We have a great time and it's still a calling from the Lord and it's amazing. And I just wonder like, what is next with this piece? Like, how am I going to reach people? Because everything, all of God's work brings his children back to him. And so how am I supposed to do that by doing just fun experiments on YouTube? I'm not totally sure, but it's really cool. And I'm glad to do it. So I love how it all expands. Like you can start here and then he'll be like, oh, it's this big, it's this big, it's this big. And your vision keeps growing <laughs> as you go. And it's so fun to be on that journey of watching it unfold. So that's an encouragement for anybody who's listening. If you feel to go do something, whether it's just serving a friend or introducing somebody, just do the thing you feel called to do because you don't yeah. know, like God can change things so fast. Yeah. I was like, you have no idea. And he's been working on it for a decade. Yeah, he really has. And if I would have said no to my friend that day, not given that little bit of service of introducing those guys, this would have been, I, I wouldn't have had it, you know? Like, just, just do it. You get the nudge, you just go do it. It doesn't matter what's coming or what's not coming, just go. So, cause I can guarantee this, like, this is a great example of something that's easy to see where his hand was in your life, but how many times do you not see it? And how much greater is it than a YouTube channel? You know, we're going to get on the other side and, you know, the worth of souls is great in the eyes of God. And if you could bring one soul to him, how great will be your joy and just do it. Cause you're going to get on the other side and the YouTube channel is not going to matter at all. You know what I'm doing right now. It's only the positive effect that I'm having on the children of God. That's what matters. You know, um, I enjoy being in front of the camera. It really fills me up. Like I'm super extroverted, but it's, it's his work. Like that's what I need to do. And that's the amazing part about it. Just go do it. So. One random thought that came while you were saying that. So I homeschooled for a lot of years and my kids would watch the King of Random <laughs> over and over and over again and all these things and perhaps part of that influence is creating positive uplifting content that still has a good value that's helping instill in these kids their skills of engineering and design and all these things that are going to help those kids to fulfill their purpose as they grow yeah yeah i've gotten a lot of comments like that on the videos is like oh my gosh king of random this is what got me loving science this is what got me into my career this is what it created a passion in my life for whatever you know like so yes very very accurate that is very true fun. i love it okay last thing is there anything that's on your heart that you felt like oh i hope i get to answer this or just one any last anything that's 
in your heart or on your mind and you're like, I'm supposed to say this or share this. Yes. Yes. And this is, this is one of the truths that I was taught by this lady that I was dating that really has sunk deep into my soul. And it's just the simple fact of ask for what you want, you know? And she, yeah, she, she told me at some point, like, cause I was hesitant about something that I, you know, she's like, Jaron, just ask whatever it is that you want, just ask for it. And that is such a true principle. And so I know like, I like I've been approached once or twice by some people who who recognized me, you know, from the videos and and they're just so hesitant to like take up my time, you know, and it's like but for me specifically, I love people. I love them. I want everybody to talk to me, you know, and so like and I'm grateful those people asked for what they wanted and I'm grateful that like now like I just jump in and like I'm I've had the opportunity to rub shoulders with some really cool, highly successful famous people and i just walk up and i ask for what i want and what i've realized is that in every situation so far so far maybe it'll change they've all been amazing and you know like hey can i get a selfie with you hey can we talk i'd love to do an interview like and everybody's just like yes yes i would love to do that you know um and there's there's just so many things and again in the scriptures again and again and again that we can have according to our desires but if you never put that desire out there you you don't get it you know, tell God what you want, tell the people around you what you want, be your authentic self, because I promise you, if you're holding back, you're going to attract the people to you that are not attracted to you, they're attracted to whatever fake perception that they have, because you're not showing up authentically, just go for whatever it is you want, absolutely, 100%, so just stay aligned with God while you do that. I love it, thank you so much for being with us. If someone wants to learn more about you, do you have a website or somewhere you want us to point them? Should they just go to King of Random on YouTube? Like, Yeah, just go to King of Random on YouTube. Totally fine. If you want to email me, like if you have any anything you want to discuss with me, it's just jerom, J-A-R-O-M, at tcor, T-K-O-R, dot TV. So anybody's welcome to email me. I'll get back with you. It's lots of fun. So. Okay. T-O-R dot TV. Write that down. I'll add it to your page with your video. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here and we will see you next time. For those of you who are looking for more interviews like this, you can go to the consecratedlifeproject.com where you can see the vault and all the interviews and a whole bunch of really cool stuff we have for you over there as well as read the poem that started it all. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Jim. Yep.